Here we go again, putting ourselves through torture for the benefit of you so that we can give you all the information you need to make the decisions that is best for your running and your running only. And it starts with a lactate threshold test. Most experienced runners you talk to are gonna have an opinion on how to train. Use heart rate, don't use heart rate, get tested in a lab, throw away technology and train on feel like they're used to. And if you're not careful, you're gonna be swayed into training based on what worked for someone else. Strip it back and the main two ways I hear being debated are embracing science and everything that comes with it, or going old school and using feel and shunning some technology. I'm gonna present the facts and I'm gonna offer my opinions on the pros and cons of both approaches in the hope that that you're able to make your own decisions based on what's best for you, not what worked for someone else once. And the first stop is the lab where Mary and I have arranged to have our lactate thresholds tested. So while we're waiting for a taxi to take us to our doom, I mean, uh, testing, it's worth just touching on some of the scientific methods that we already use in our training. And the first one is that we train using heart rate zones, which I won't go into detail to how you calculate them, but I'll just link it above there. But it's fair to say that using heart rate zones keeps us accountable it keeps us in the right places at the right time because let's face it if you're like me then you probably have um, this urge to push a little bit harder than you should so heart rate zones is the first thing that we do scientific but I live by it Another scientific method that we follow is um, we use training blocks for our training. So periods of training, three weeks usually, and they're progressively harder, and then one week recovery. And we do that on repeat. And it's just a way of making sure that there's no wasted sessions, that we can target different things in different blocks. Um, it reduces, in my head anyway, our risk of injury when we're really being targeted and focused. This is probably the top of the tree when it comes to the science-based approach. As you can see, Mary in the background on a treadmill, what we're doing is testing our lactate threshold. So in a lab, you can't get much better. When we come out of this, we're gonna know our really accurate heart rate zones, we're gonna know our threshold, and it's gonna allow us to be really, really specific in our training. That's the hope from this, but it's not a nice test. So it's like real-time tracking. You can see the data being put onto the spreadsheet behind us. We've got tracking Mary's heart rate as well over here. And there's Mary on the treadmill, progressively getting faster. So she's currently at goal marathon pace, in theory, which is that for her heart rate. Um, what that will say in terms of lactate threshold, how that will reflect that, we don't know yet, but this is the kind of aim pace, 12 kilometers an hour, 3.30 marathon. The final pro of taking a scientific approach, as I see it, is that it is research-based. Testing and tweaking have happened time and time again to ensure we get it right and get the most from it. And the majority of the pros use this approach too, so although we're not pros, we can still use some of the tools that they do. Oh, 15.1. That was pretty grim. It'll be interesting to see the results. Okay, results time. We're not going to go into it in too much detail because that's not what this video is about. But suffice to say, it was beneficial for the both of us. It's really good, really interesting. If you look at Mary's results, then we can see that she's predicted currently a marathon time of 3.31. And you want 3.30 and that's great because we haven't properly started the training block. Yeah. And the benefit of that is we now know where her thresholds are so that we can accurately play around with them in training and get you to 329, not 331. Yeah, and actually that is such a big confidence boost to know it is within my reach. So the data kind of matched what we hoped and what we kind of thought, but knowing it now is real has given me such a big boost going into the big block of training. And for me, similarly, it's predicted a 243, 
I'm fine with that. I think I'm capable of a 240 on my best day, but at least now again, I know my thresholds, I can train at them and I can really be targeted. And ultimately that's what this is all about for us. I've given you all the pros. We've talked about the results of the lactate threshold testing, but now it's probably important to touch on why science has its drawbacks, the cons, if you like, of the approach. And the first one is science and the training methods behind it, like the heart rate and the lactate threshold testing and following training blocks, is it can sometimes be accused of restricting fun, of taking away that kind of freedom that you have to train and do what you want when you want. I mean, I'm looking ahead at my UTMB race, my 100 kilometers later this year, and already there are a number of races I want to do, but they always fall on frustratingly like a recovery week or, and I can't mess around with my plan too much because I believe in that process. But for other people, that just might take away too much of the fun, having to miss races or tweaking your training. And I'd say the other main con is that really, is it needed for many runners out there? What do you get in the game for? Because ultimately, if you want to improve performance, then maybe the scientific approach is an important part of your training. But if you're just getting out there because it's good for your headspace, it's good for your mental health, or it's just because you want to be a better person, maybe you don't need all of the things that we've talked about, like certainly not lactate threshold testing, but sometimes not even heart rate training. M maybe that's not why you do this. But now I want to talk about the pros of training by feel. And I'm going to do that by going out for a run on feel. And now it's time to start talking about the pros of training on feel, of which there are also many, starting with this. The obvious first pro to this is that it's freer. I'm just training on feel. Lots of people who train on feel train by something called RPE, which is rating of perceived exertion, but essentially it's just how hard you feel like you're working one out of 10. So an eight out of 10 is always an eight out of 10 and you're not a slave to any heart rate data, whether you're going up or down. It just feels a lot nicer to sometimes just go out and be and enjoy and not be a slave to any metrics. And another pro is that you really get to learn about your body and you tune into how you feel. You learn to listen. If you're tired, dial it back. If you need a day off, take one. By shifting the focus from outward facing to inward facing, you're learning how your body responds to a large range of different situations. And crucially, you're learning what to do about it. Probably my favorite pro of training on field, by far actually, is the fact that you're far more adaptable you can race and train when you want and when you need. If there's a race that someone flags up to you that they're doing that's coming up in a couple of weeks, sure, I'll come along and I'll do that too. You just have a lot more options to not miss out on stuff that maybe your friends are doing. And I really love that. And if life is stressful or work is stressful or anything like that, it doesn't matter. You're not in a set pattern, it's all good. Just take a down week, you're absolutely fine. And that's just such a huge pro of training to feel. And perhaps the most important reason, or certainly the reason that I think most people train to feel is that it makes you a more mindful athlete. It kind of roots you in the now while you're out there. You're not thinking about your watch or your heart rate. You're not thinking about a pace that you have to run. You're able to take in nature. You're able to just be and just enjoy the running and really get to know your body. And I think that is an extremely important and an extremely underrated tool in running. And it's certainly a reason, or it's certainly the biggest reason I know for people training on field rather than using technology overly. So why don't we briefly touch on the cons of training by feel as I see them. And the first one is there's a lot less structure in place. It can sometimes feel a little aimless. It can sometimes feel a little purposeless. You know, a lot of the time you're not following set down training principles that have been supported in literature, they're evidenced as working, and feel doesn't necessarily follow that path. And also, as I said earlier, it's sometimes really difficult to kind of dial in a particular, if you go for an easy run, let's say for example, then you wanna make sure it's easy. But if you're training on feel, you're not looking at heart rate, maybe you don't even have a watch. What you think is easy usually 
isn't as easy as it needs to be and we've all fallen into that trap me included for a long time and I guess really it just means are you getting everything out of every session or are there sessions where maybe you're not getting the most out of it as we've said in a previous video no session is absolutely wasted but then do you want to squeeze the juice out of every session make the most of your time that you're out there and I guess ultimately, you probably knew this was coming, the best way for training science versus feel is a healthy balance of everything. But you've got to find the bits that you like from each approach and make them work for you. Ultimately, that's what training and life is about everything in moderation. I use a little bit from all of these approaches in my training and I've managed to tailor them to me to make them work for me. So there's no right answer, only the right answer for you. Now if you're interested in being a runner then perhaps there are some hard truths that other runners hadn't quite told you when you got into the game for fear of stopping you. I'm not that person, I want to give you a heads up on what's coming in your journey. So here's the nine hard truths of being a runner. And if you're interested in how to use heart rate training, then here's a video called The Big Problem with Heart Rate Training, where we go through it and how to use it properly to get the most out of all of your sessions. Now all you've got to do is consider clicking the subscribe button, and I'll see you Wednesday.